So what are the impacts of Confederate era monuments and imagery in 2021? It's a major conversation our country continues. Should statues, monuments, tributes built to honor Confederate war heroes still have a place in our public places? Should those who fought and advocated for slavery during the Civil War really be honored today? Well, that conversation goes on. Cathedral of the Rockies in Boise decided they were going to make a move. Last summer, they announced a stained glass image of Confederate Army leader Robert E. Lee. It's going to be placed with a more replaced, that is, with a more inclusive image. The church says they wanted to repent publicly for their participation in systematic racism. After an extended community conversation, a new image has been selected and now installed at the cathedral. Joe Paris and photojournalist Kevin Esslinger take us there. Inside the Cathedral of the Rockies, there are a lot of faces. Over the last year, though, one of the faces has vanished. Confederate Army leader Robert E. Lee, an image that had been in the church since the 1960s. After we removed Robert E. Lee, we, we kind of, and we put in a clear window, and that allowed some light in, which was, you know, proverbial perhaps to say, who should we, who should go up in the window? After conversations with the community, Pastor Dwayne Anders says the United Methodist Church and Cathedral of the Rockies decided to remove the image of Lee, explaining that Lee is not someone who upheld Christian values in his leadership as a general in the Confederate Army defending slavery. The task then became, whose image should replace Lee? 50 or so names came in, great names, uh, some we had not thought of, and then we started to research the various list of names, and as we did that, one kind of rose to the top because it had a connection to the cathedral, to Boise, and to Methodism, and that's Bishop Leontine Kelly. As Andrew said, the community had a lot of ideas for a new face to overlook the sanctuary. So why Bishop Kelly? So Bishop Leontine Kelly was elected bishop at a jurisdictional meeting here in Boise in 1984 in the Methodist Church. She was the first African-American woman elected bishop in any denomination that we're aware of. If you go to her Wikipedia page, it'll say the first in the world, first woman, black woman bishop in the world. She was elected here, consecrated here, and began her ministry as bishop here in this building. In the context of replacing Lee, Pastor Anders says the accomplishments of Bishop Kelly also put her apart from other names. Uh, Bishop Kelly was a phenomenal leader. She not only was the first African-American woman, she was ahead of her time as an advocate for LGBT inclusion. She was an advocate for women in ministry. She was only the second woman uh, bishop in our denomination, so she was a front runner in many ways. Uh, what's been the reaction of the congregation? Well, as you can imagine, um, we are not always of one mind. We had to wrestle through this. We had to disagree for a while. We had to fight through it. We had to pray through it. Some folks were feeling like, are, are we caught in cancel culture? Are we eliminating history? But when they listened to the conversations around the national issue of systemic racism, as we watched Breonna Taylor and George Floyd be shot and killed, it became obvious to us that we needed to move forward. But we wanted the history to stay here. So the, the previous window will be gifted to the Idaho Black History Museum, so it stays in Idaho. It continues to teach about what it means to be a person of color here in Idaho. Church leaders say they know simply removing and replacing an image does not finalize the conversation. They vowed to repent, and that continues beyond this action. We all live within systemic racism, and so the, we're working to say as followers of Christ, how do we step out of that? How do we become anti-racist? How do we become proponents of all people? The, the word repentance is a key word in, in Christian life, right? The first sermon Jesus preaches, repent and believe. Repent means change the way you think. And so even as followers of Christ, we have to occasionally change the way we think about things that we were comfortable with that we recognize maybe weren't fully representative of God. That's, that's a very good point. Re Repentance is about changing the way you think. And he also talked about that conversation of, are we just succumbing to this cancel culture, if you want to call it that? And that conversation brought them to where they are now, which is a great point. So they put it up there kind of unceremoniously, right? Is right. there going to be like a proper unveiling? Yes, there's going to be a, a full uh, service and ceremony coming up in the springtime. Um, it's actually going to be an opportunity to have Bishop Kelly's family to come to the actual cathedral and be there, part of a, a special uh, ceremony, Brian. And it is a very big deal to have an image of someone, I mean, physically memorialized and put into a stained glass image. And again, as you heard uh, the pastor talk about, they had about 50 names they were going through, but there was just such a local connection to Bishop Kelly. and 
really uh, what she did for the United Methodist Church, which mm -hmm. of course calls the Cathedral of the Rockies home, as well as what they say other Christian denominations as well. So uh, a very interesting uh, woman, a very accomplished woman. If you're interested, I would definitely advise to look her up because she is she's done a lot. You keep saying Bishop Kelly, and I keep thinking to myself, not the Catholic high school that's also here in Boise. Not that confusing. No, that's Roman Catholic, uh, Bishop Kelly High School, and then this is yep. the United Methodist Church. Same name, different, different deities. All right, cool. That's awesome. Good for them. Thank you very much, Joe.